Hi guys, James at Rampant Line Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are going to stick to Sweden and we're also going to stick to my home county of Skåne here in the very south of the country. For this review, we're returning to one of my very local breweries and it's one that I always enjoy reviewing different beers from, but this is a sub-style that I've never had from them before and it is one that in recent years I've been complaining that there hasn't been enough of, but in fairness, in recent months there has been a little bit of a kind of mini resurgence with this sub-style actually and I'm very very curious to see what this brewery's interpretation of it is. So for this review then we are going to head to Esluf which is to the north of me here in Lund and we're having a look at yet another beer from Remaluv Gortz Brewery. So this must be review, at least review number 15 that I've done from these guys. The name of this brewery, Remaluv Gortz Brewery, it translates to Remaluv Farm Brewery if you're interested in the English. But this particular beer is called Tire Kicker. It comes in at 6.2% ABV and apparently this one is a West Coast IPA. So yeah, most of the beers that I've been reviewing from these guys in recent times have actually been laggers. There was the um, Skånsk Pilsner, which was really nicely done actually, I really enjoyed that beer. Probably my favourite lager that I had from them actually, in fairness. Um, I had the Melix, which was the grapefruit oil one, the Rauch, which was a little slightly smoky one, and um, I forget what the other one was, the Akoya, which had a really interesting uh, German hop in it that I hadn't tried before. Um, but the last IPAs that I had, it would have been the Blaze, which was a New England double, and then before that I think the Neblina, which is their Session IPA, and in fairness, the Neblina um, is uh, one that I would highly, highly recommend. That's my favourite IPA that I've had from these guys, I think, ever. And for me, it's quite strange that the Session IPA is the one that really kind of stands out to me, but I would really, really recommend that you have a go at that beer. But all of the IPAs that I've had from these guys until now, if memory is serving me correctly, have been hazy New England types. So I'm really curious to see what their interpretation of the West Coast style is like. So fingers crossed this is another good beer. This is a brew that I know are very, very capable, so I do have high hopes for this one and I hope that you guys enjoy my take on this beer as well. Incidentally this one was released as part of the Local Osmoska League assortment for the 1st of October 2020 in Sistembolaget here in Sweden. So yeah, let's see how we get on with this one then. So as always with my reviews, I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery before we taste the beer. If you want to get straight to the tasting, just fast forward. All the usual links are in the video description below. That's the brewery website, the link to my other reviews that I've done from Remaluv Gorge Brewery before, and you will see more added to that list in the near future because these guys are fairly prolific these days. There's all the usual social media down there. If you want to see more reviews, do please consider subscribing to the channel. The whole channel of course has a geography based tagging system so you can go into the home page and search for beer based on country, city, state, county, province, prefecture, or whatever it is you're interested in. Do check out the playlists of beers from different countries. There is one there for all the Swedish beers that I've reviewed for you. That's constantly being added to and as always please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. It's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely hugely appreciated. So anyway, to tell you a little bit about Remaluv Gord's Brewery then, on to my brewery notes. So, Remaluv Gord's Brewery, as I've mentioned to you already, are based in Esluv, a little bit to the northeast, north northeastish of me here in Lund, in Skåne in the south of Sweden and they've been brewing there since the winter or autumn of 2014 and in January of 2015 they started selling their beers through Systembolaget. So the owner and founder of this company is Håkan Nielsen and together with his wife Michelle, he started his plan for a, for a brewery a couple of years previous to this. And um, the brewery is located on his family's farm. And Hokan is the fifth generation of his family to farm the countryside here in Skåne. So the old barn was renovated and a brew house of 1,500 litres was installed. And Hampus Olofsson was hired as the brewer back in August of 2014. And he remains with them to, these day, to this day, but he was previously working at Malma Brewing Company, who are also one of my favourites, actually. Those guys do some really really nice beers and I just wish they would can and bottle some other things actually. But um, over the last few years these guys have been gradually expanding the capacity at the brewery and getting their beers out there a little bit more. They now have a 3000 litre brew kit and they invested in new fermentation tanks in the spring of 2018 which apparently takes their capacity up to a possible 800,000 litres of beer per year. In 2019 they also opened up their summer pub as well which for the moment was opening up every Wednesday. I think it wasn't operating really over 2020 because of the whole um, COVID-19 situation and they were planning to do some expansion this year as well over 2020 but again I'm not sure if that came to fruition because of the whole 
uh, COVID-19 situation. But uh, as of October 2020, when I'm producing this review for you, these guys have produced 50 different kinds of beer. And as I mentioned earlier, you tend to get one or two different beers from these guys every month through the local Smoska League. Recently, it's been a lot about the laggers and things that they've been doing. As I say, the Melix grapefruit oil, the Rauch beer, which was uh, the Rauch lager, which was really nice, and then also the Akoya, which was a really, really interesting one. They've been putting out some really nice lager beers there. The Scones Pilsner, I would highly recommend, and I hope they can do that as a core beer because it is very, very good actually. Um, but yeah, they also do a number of hazy New England IPAs. I have had a stout from these guys in the past, but I've not seen a stout from them in quite some time, um, so it would be interesting to see them have a go at something uh, like that over the next little while so they are getting a little bit more experimental and uh, their recent beers have been uh, really quite nice i have to say so yeah this is a brewery that i always keep an eye out for in the local smosco league and if you do come across some of their beers i would recommend you try them the red carol which is their christmas seasonal and um, i think if that's the strong one because there's the red slope and the red carol the stronger one of those two is a very nice kind of winter beer um, I would also recommend the Neblina, and uh, that's a really lovely session IPA. And what was the other one? The Local Hops. If you can get one of the Local Hops beers, those are always um, really quite interesting as well. So, um, yeah, that's all I can really tell you about Ray Malouf Gorge Brewery for the moment. If you want to learn more about these guys, you can check out the brewery website in the description below. You can follow them on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with all the latest goings on. And you can, of course, check out the Rate Beer Untapped and Beer Advocate pages to learn more about all the different beers that these guys have done. So, um, yeah, let's see how we get on with this one then. So I'll just let you have a little look at the artwork of this one before we open up. As you can see, the sort of pattern of the label and stuff like that is fairly similar to what you'll normally get from Raymond Louvre Gorge Brewery. But um, yeah, the, obviously the background artwork is a little bit different. It looks more, it actually looks a little bit more like stitching, to be honest, the way these tires are all kind of intertwined, but you can see the treads on them quite, uh, quite clearly. I'm not sure why they would have called it tire kicker. To be honest with you, they don't tell you on the cans. I do wish that they had a little blurb on the can or something to tell you a wee bit more about the beer. They've got space here to do that, actually. But, um, yeah, it doesn't tell you exactly that. And when I looked on the, the website and the untapped and things, there wasn't really very much information available on the beer itself. But to be honest, that is kind of uh, normal for... Um, that's normal for Raymond Gorge Gorsbury Grey. But you can see one of the things you always get on their beers is the little hen. And it says, made in Skiona. So, yeah, it is pretty cool. I like that, that they have the little scones thing. It'd be cool if they put a little flag um, with it or something too, to be honest. But, um, yeah, this one should be pretty cool, actually. So, um, yeah, it says on the side here, this one does have wheat and oat malt in it. So that's going to be interesting, because like I said, this is supposed to be a West Coast IPA, from what I gather. But, um, yeah, 6.2% ABV, this one, 330 milliliter can. I think I paid like 30 30 or 35 Swedish kroners for this, so yeah, like three euros fifty, um, about three pounds, yeah, three, you know, three dollars seventy five or something like that. The dollar has dropped a little bit, as I said, but yeah, let's get this guy out and we will get on with the tasting. I'm very curious to see what this beer has in store for us, so let's get it out and into the glass. My first West Coast IPA from Raymond Gorge Brewery. Hopefully this is a good one. And I hope it's got a good little bit of bitterness to it as well. Quite a few of the West Coast IPAs I've had recently just haven't had the level of bitterness that you would normally expect of them. But um, yeah, let's have a taste of this one then and see how we go. I'm very, very curious to see what this beer has in store for us. But um, yeah, as you can see, this one's poured a lovely kind of... Um, it's poured a lovely kind of bright golden colour. This one it actually looks kind of like a pilsner, to be quite honest with you. It looks very, very similar to some of the lager beers that I've had from these guys over the last little while. But you can see there's a solid half, two-thirds finger of a frothy. I would say cream-coloured head on this one. That's not a perfect white head, but the beer itself is very clear. You can see if I put my fingers behind it, it does have that lovely kind of ambery, pale straw, golden colour. It's actually very similar to the colour of the label, to be honest with you. Probably intentional. But yeah, one or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass with this one. A steady stream of carbonation going up towards the bottom of the head, and I can see from looking at it, it's just fading away to be a very kind of thin 
uh, foaming there. Eventually it will just be a ring around the kind of edge of the glass. But um, yeah, really nice looking beer this one. As I say, the colour is a little bit more like a Pilsner, but it's not unheard of to have a West Coast IPA that is this colour. You can see if I put my fingers behind the glass, there is uh, quite a lot of transparency to this beer. So let's have a closer look at the aroma then and just see how we get on with this one. I'm very curious to see what it has in store for us. Um, but nothing overly surprising about the appearance, as I said. Oh, right, okay. That's an interesting one. Um, so, yeah, it does have that kind of biscuity, uh, slightly caramelly thing that you would expect of the West Coast IPA. I am quite excited for this, I have to say. I'm not sure about the bitterness yet. I think this might, just from the aroma, I think this might be a slightly lower bitterness uh, West Coast IPA, one of the more modern, I guess you could say, more modern interpretations of the style. Um, but yeah, the malty side of the beer is really promising, I have to say. Um, so yeah, underneath this one, on the backbone of the beer, you do get a nice little bit of a slightly brown bready character to it. It has a wee bit of that rye bready, bread crusty kind of thing, which I really like. Um, so, yeah. The aroma uh, that comes out of the malty side of this beer is um, it's really quite nice. Um, so yeah, nice little bit of a brown bready backbone to the beer. You do get a straight up sweet caramel out of this one. You get some nice um, sort of McVitie's digestive biscuit qualities, which is, is good. This beer really has that slightly oily brown sugar that you want from a West Coast IPA. Um, <clears throat> and I was I was a bit suspicious of it, in, in fairness, because it said, you know, wheat and uh, it said wheat and oat milks in it, because obviously the oats would normally make the, the flavour a little bit more kind of creamy. But as long as it's used sparingly and there's enough kind of barley malt in it, it should be all right. Um, but yeah, it does feel, the, the kind of biscuit -y and caramelly notes in this one does feel a little bit light in the aroma. But um, it certainly comes across quite nicely. But the more and more that I smell of this beer, um, I get a little bit more of a woody note out of it. There's a little touch of an earthy thing going on. And there's a few more kind of grainy bread crusty qualities coming out of this beer as well. So the malt base is quite an interesting one. It's got the brown sugary notes that I'd expect. Maybe not quite as big and oily in a sense. A little bit more grainy and biscuity. But yeah, you do get more and more kind of grainy bready notes and bread crusty qualities coming out of this beer as well, come to think of it. So yeah, take a little bit of time and just um, just kind of ponder that over actually, because uh, the malt base in this one is quite interesting. It is a little bit reminiscent of some of the very early beers that I had from uh, from these guys actually. One of the two of the beers that I really need to try from uh, from this brewery it would be the Genius and the uh, the Fenton. I need to try those because those are two that I, I always used to see, but I just never... Um, got around to actually so yeah that's I do need to check out those at some stage but um, yeah it's, it's an interesting smelling malt base this one one of the more grainy leaning West Coast IPAs that I've come across I would say on reflection but uh, yeah on the hoppy side of things then there's a little touch of earthiness to this one you do get a little bit of that almost German noble hoppy earthiness to it um, a little bit of kind of floral aromaticity it does have a wee touch of spice to it in fairness some nice grassiness in there as well there's something German about the hops in this one for me I would wonder if it's got a little bit of like Mandarina Bavaria or something in it. There is just something about the, the aromas coming out of this beer that, that says to me Mandarina Bavaria. I always like playing guess the hops with these beers as you'll know if you've watched the channel but um, yeah there's just something quite familiar about this. It's got a lovely orangey side to it but yeah the green side of the hops for me um, nice little bit of earthiness. It could be mosaic. Mosaic would also give you the oranges but give you a little bit of the earthiness. So mosaic or Mandarina Bavaria I think um, so yeah, nice little bit of earthiness, good little bit of floral aromaticity, some lighter grassiness, and then you've got a nice oily, kind of fruity character to this one. So let's focus on that fruity side of it now. So for me, um, there is a wee bit of it. It's quite a juicy, orangey leaning kind of thing. I wouldn't be surprised if there's Cascade in this either. This could be like a mosaic Cascade or a Mandarina Bavaria Cascade sort of thing. So yeah, nice oily oranges. You've got a little bit of a slightly almost figgy type quality to this beer and that's you know Cascade can give you that it's got a nice um, there is a little bit of a kind of rounded um, almost slightly reddish fruity quality to it but for me the aroma that comes out of this beer there's a wee bit of the grapefruit there's a little bit of an almost kind of figgy quality to it maybe a few kind of peri esters or something like that and then you've got a nice big oily orangey character and maybe just a little bit of a kind of grassy zestiness sitting at the um, on the, the front of the palate there, uh, on the front of the nose, sorry. So yeah, it's quite an interesting aroma, this one, I have to say. Um, 
I'm curious to see how that kind of translates into the flavour of the beer, but certainly take a bit of time and enjoy the aroma of it before you get stuck in. But we're going to try this one now and see how we go. So yeah, this one is the Tire Kicker, a 6.2% West Coast IPA from Raymaloof Gorse Braggery in Esloof here in Skåne in the south of Sweden. Let's get stuck in. Slange, skål. Yeah, that is pretty nice actually. It's quite different from other West Coast IPAs I've come across in fairness. Um, but I do like this, I have to say I do like this one. Yeah, this is a nice beer. It's definitely one of the more kind of modern interpretations of the West Coast. IPA. Um, the bitterness in this one, it does have a wee bit more bitterness to it, but it's certainly not the 80, you know, the sort of 80 ish IBUs that we used to get from this style back in the day. This is definitely a more modern interpretation of the West Coast IPA, but I think it works out quite well. I think you have to take a few sips of this one as well to really kind of get what it's going to. This one for me strikes me as quite a biscuity, caramelly, more sort of orangey leaning um, IPA. Um, it's th I like this one. It is really, it really is slightly biscuity and quite grainy. This one, um, so yeah, not a, it, it's not your kind of conventional West Coast IPA, I would say, but um, it certainly is a nice and quite interesting um, interpretation of the style. And when you've reviewed two thousand four hundred beers, you do want things that are going to make you think a little bit. So um, yeah, so let's kind of think about this one a little bit and break the flavour down properly. But yeah, another solid beer from uh, from me with Gorsberg. I wouldn't expect anything less, to be honest. So yeah, it's actually quite oily as well, to be honest with you. So let's break this down then. Straight away with this beer, you get a nice little bit of smoothness and that just, um, you know, you get a nice little bit of a kind of bready, almost brown bready character there and that just blankets the middle of your tongue. So you can feel a um, nice little bit of a toasty kind of bread crusty quality to the beer. Um, it is, I really like how that um, how that side of it goes together. Yeah, nice little bit of a toasty bread crusty kind of thing going on. Um, a wee bit, the, it has a white bready base to it in the middle of the pat, in the middle third of your palate and the um, the, the kind of back third of your tongue, so there is a bit of a grainy undertone to this beer, a sort of brown bready, bread crusty sort of thing. But yeah, in the middle of your palate it's a little bit more white bready, and as you go to the back third of your palate you can feel the wheat just kind of thickens up a little bit. But the wheat in this one, it comes across as a slightly more grainy wheat, it's not the biggest and smoothest of wheats that you're going to come across, but um, it does go together quite nicely. So, yeah, you can definitely feel a bit of that wheaty influence in this one, I have to say. You can feel the oats in the middle of the palate too, just smoothening the beer out a little bit. But yeah, the wheat um, really kind of sits there on the, the back third of your tongue. You do get a few of the yeasty elements. The yeast is adding a little bit of a kind of grainy type quality to this beer as well. But as you move further forward into that middle third of your tongue, you can feel it just gets a little bit... It just stops feeling quite as thick. And then, as I say, brown, grainy, kind of bready character in there. Um, a little bit more of a, you do get a little bit of the oaty kind of smoothness sitting on top of it. Then on top of that, you've got the kind of brown sugar there. You've got a sweet caramel in the very centre of the palate. Then you've got a wee bit of a, um, you've got a little bit of a kind of biscuity, McVitie's digestive biscuity sort of oily kind of thing to it. And um, yeah, I like how that, um, how all that kind of comes out. Um, so yeah. Nice kind of, as I say, a nice sort of oily, um, yeah, nice kind of oily caramelly sweetness in the beginning. Biscuit, McVitie's digestive biscuity notes there, and I think the kind of brown sugary notes that this beer has come out a little bit more the further that you go into the aftertaste. But the graininess, uh, once once you get the oily, you do get the oily um, kind of brown sugars, but you do start to get a little bit of graininess out of this one as well. But if you go to the front corners of the palate and then diagonally back, you'll notice that underneath there is a wee touch of a. Uh, slightly woody note to this beer as well, which is um, which I have to say is quite interesting. I do like that about uh, about this one. It's got a wee bit of that nice uh, nice graininess to it. So um, yeah, the, the flavour 
composition of the malt base in this one is pretty nice. So definitely one of the more grainy and slightly bready leaning um, West Coast IPAs that I've come across. It almost has a wee touch of an almost Pilsner like Christmas to it. Now I do wonder if there is a wee touch of Pilsner malt in this because if you go to that border between the middle third of your palate and the back third of your palate you can feel there is just a little bit of a, a slightly more crisp character to this beer. So I'm curious about that. Could there be a little touch of Carapils or something in here? Um, but yeah, a nice malt base. I do like how this one goes together, but it's nowhere near as, as kind of smooth and oily as you're going to get from some other West Coast IPAs. This one's definitely a bit more grainy and bread crusty and stuff. But yeah, on the hoppy side of things then, back corners of the palate, you've got a nice little bit of earthiness there, which is quite nice. Uh, that could suggest, as I said earlier, Mandarina Bavaria or a little bit of mosaic. But as you move further forward along the sides of the palate, there's a little bit of a herbal quality. And as you reach the front corners of the tongue, it's got a little bit more of a kind of floral aromaticity around the very front curve of the tongue. It's just a little bit lighter and more uh, grassy in my mind. So yeah, um, on the front third of the tongue then, you've got that nice kind of oily bubble with those juicy fruity esters kind of um, come out of the beer and um, it's quite well balanced this one. I mean if you go towards the back of that front third of your palate you do get a little touch of a kind of uh, darker grapefruity note out of this one but as you move further forward you start to get an almost slightly it feels a little bit kind of figgy to be honest with you and almost a little bit peary but then as you reach the kind of front half of that front third of your tongue it's distinctly more oily and, and orangey or tangerine-y. So like I said to you I wonder I do wonder, this is either a bit of mosaic in here, or it's a little bit of um, of Mandarina Bavaria. And I, I'm more tempted to say it's mosaic, actually, because the earthiness is a little bit stronger than I would normally expect from a, a German noble hop. The thing about those high alpha acid German noble hops, like, you know, um, Haller Tau Blanc and, uh, and Mandarina Bavaria, they still retain the bitter side, of the, the green side of the hop, it really retains that German noble quality, even though it's got these big, crazy fruity notes. So the earthiness, the strength of the earthiness in this one makes me say mosaic and I want to say there's a bit of Cascade in here. Very familiar with the Cascade hop because one of my um, favourite beers back home, the Chihalian Lager, or it's a Czech Pilsen basically, and that's a Cascade um, Pilsen. Um, and it's, uh, I've just got, you know, I just always remember what that hop tastes like. So I do get, uh, I do think there's a, it's Cascade and uh, Mosaic that's in this one. Um, I'd love to know what hops were in this just out of sheer curiosity, but I think that's what's in here. It's probably um, a bit of Cascade and a wee bit of Mosaic, maybe. Um, although I wouldn't, yeah. There could be other things, if it's oranges, you know, you could have a little bit of a Zaka, you could have Sabro and stuff, but I really, I don't think so. I think it's Mosaic and Cascade that's been used in this. It's just something very distinctive about it. A bit of Simcoe could be a possibility as well, because there are a few other tropical -y sort of subtleties to this one, so Cinco could be a possibility. But yeah, this one has a nice big oily kind of fruity character to it. Like for me, as I said, a little bit of grapefruit, wee bit of a, you do get a little bit of a kind of almost kind of figgy and there's maybe a wee bit of a tropically um, apricot note in there as well, a bit of a peary ester then on the front half of the tongue, more oily and juicy and orangey in my mind. But yeah, the fruity side of this beer goes together really nicely and on the front edge of the tongue, there is just a little bit of a slight um, kind of citrusy zest to it, so I like how this goes together. In terms of the mouthfeel then, definitely a mid-bodied beer. Carbonation is very smooth. Um, the mouthfeel overall, I would describe it as being quite oily, this one. This is definitely one of the more oily beers that I've had from Raymond of Gordsbury Grain. In fairness, you do expect that of a West Coast IPA. So yeah, more of an oily beer, this. But in terms of hoppy bitterness, um, I think this one is about 50 IBUs. 40 or 50, I think, is a fair bet for this one. It's not going to blow the head off you in terms of IBUs, but it does have a little bit more of a bitiness to it, which is what you would expect from, um, from a West Coast IPA. The malt base, as I say, a little bit more grainy, not quite as oily as you would expect from a, from a West Coast IPA, um, or a, a conventional West Coast IPA, I guess you could say. This one's a little bit more grainy, quite akin to some of the older beers that I've had from these guys in the past. Um, and it does, it's got a good degree of oily sweetness to it, but the graininess really pushes its way out the further you go into the aftertaste with this one. So some nice... Um, <clears throat> Juicy, oily, fruity characters coming out of this one. About 50-ish IBUs, like I said, and some nice juicy orangey 
uh, fruity qualities. So yeah, I like how um, I like how this one um, goes together. So thumbs up to um, to Raymond of Gorse Brewery for this one, the Tire Kicker. Quite an interesting beer. I don't know if I tasted this blind. If I would guess it was a, a properly West Coast IP because it is quite grainy, um, and that graininess almost gives it a little touch of an English character and the earthiness as well. So um, yeah. It's an interesting one, this. It's not a conventional West Coast IPA, but I can see what they're going for with this one, actually. So hopefully they do more West Coast IPAs over the next little while, but I think this is a pretty kind of a solid effort for me. So yeah, I think we can leave it at that for this review. This has been an interesting one for me, and I do like the West Coast IPAs, and this is a pretty solid, it's, it's a pretty solid beer, this. Um, as I say, not your classic West Coast IPA, but I think generally as a beer, pretty solid. So yeah, well done to Raymond of Gorse Brewery once again for this one. I do look forward to seeing more West Coast IPAs from these guys, but um, yeah, I hope that you guys have enjoyed my take on this beer. As always, let me know your own thoughts on it in the comment section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are from Raymond of Gorse Brewery as well. I highly recommend that you check out the Neblina. That's the best beer I've had from these guys over the last little while. The Red Carol and the Red Slope will be coming out soon for the winter, so do check out those if you get the chance. But um, yeah, really nice to review this one. Thank you again for watching my reviews. Please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. As I say, let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are from Raymond Louvre Gorge Brewery. Do give me some other brewery recommendations because there's so many breweries opening up here and all over the world these days. It's difficult to keep up, so give me your recommendations in the comment section below. But in the meantime, thank you again for watching. Check out my social media and make sure you check out Raymond Louvre Gorge Brewery. This one was the Tire Kicker, 6.2% West Coast IPA from Raymond of Gorge Bravery in Eslöv here in Skåne in the south of Sweden. Slange out school, catch you guys very soon. Cheers.